project, we're going to need two 55-gallon drums. Nothing special, you can get them almost anywhere. Uh, not all drums are created equal, but for the most part, as long as two of them are the same, you'll be successful, and you'll be able to figure it out. All right, now using the seam of our barrel as a guide, we're gonna lay out two lines, the first of which is five inches from the seam, and the second of which is one inch further, six inches total, our dashed line. Now the open end of the barrel is over here, and the cap end is over here. And it's tricky to see, but we're going to cut a rim on the dash line, we're going to cut the solid seam, and we're going to cut along our solid line, leaving the dash line as a guide. Now that we've cut just the middle section here, we're going to put a ratchet strap on it to hold it tight while we cut the rest. Alright, with our ratchet strap installed, we're going to cut the solid line and the seam on both sides. The ratchet strap will hold it together. Like we mentioned before, we're going to cut the rim on the dashed line. Now with our 5 inch wide strip cut, we're going to completely remove the capped end of the barrel. Now if you can't tell, this is pretty loud. So wear hearing protection and your safety glass. Be safe. All right, with the end removed, because we have the ratchet strap holding things together, we can get our strip out. I want to point out that extra one inch that we cut off the rim up to the dash line is going to allow the metal to overlap. We'll use some sheet metal screws, self-tapping style, to hold the barrel together. We'll ratchet her down, pull it together, screw it together. You may have to monkey with it a little bit, but I like to get the tabbed edge on the inside of the seam cut. Progress the ratchet strap, and once you have it lined up, you can fasten it together. Once you get a few fasteners in, you can pop the ratchet strap off. It'll help with lining up the opposite end. With both ends secured, we're going to stand this up and then we're going to run our screws from the inside out. Now you'll notice I removed the screws that I initially placed to redirect them from the inside out. Point being, I like to have all the fasteners pointed outward.
for no real reason other than I just don't like, I'm gonna come by and cut the excess fasteners protruding out of the barrel off. With the barrel secure, I wanna point out that we reduce the circumference by six inches total. Five inches cut out with a one inch overlap and the diameter is 20 inches now. With the stock barrel having started between 22 and a half and 23 inches, uh, we've simply made it smaller, which will help us later as we slide one barrel inside the other. Now sticking with the same modified barrel, we're gonna flip it over. got the rim up right now, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, which is a piece of three and a half inch square plastic trash, and I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to mark a pattern all the way around. There's one, two, three, four, five, all the way around to number 18. So first cut, this is the number six, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to cut along here, here, and here, okay? Here, here, and here. Then number 12, we're gonna go here, here, and here. And then number 18, I'll point out this is side, bottom, and side. Okay, we're gonna fold those up. It's important to recognize we're leaving the rim intact. also notice the space between number 18 and number one. That's dead space where the seam is. We're gonna cut just a little bit into the rim from the inside out to allow us to fold them up. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bend this in and up. Please, we're working with metal. Everything's sharp, be careful. Wear gloves, be safe. Using a sturdy pair of pliers, uh, we can apply a little bit of shape to these three legs that we're making. Obviously, you don't have to be very precise. We just want some geometry so there's some rigidity. Next up, we're gonna cut out the even numbers. We're gonna cut the bottom, the side, and the top, leaving the rim, and we're gonna fold these in. So once again, even numbers, we're gonna cut the bottom, side, and the top, leaving the rim, Bottom, side, top. Doing that for all the remaining even numbers. We cut the bottom, we cut the side, and then we're cutting the top right below the rim. So now that we've got our three sides cut out, we're gonna gently fold these in. Just like that. Bending these just a little bit past 90, which will direct the air as it's pulled into the bottom of the burn barrel. And these six tabs will hold up the grate in the bottom of the burn barrel. So now as you can see, we've got one, two, three legs, and we've got six tabs folded in. We're gonna flip her back over and it's gonna stand on its legs. So next we draw two lines. Uh, the top one is one and a half inches down from the cut edge, and the second one's another one and a half inches, or a total of three from the cut edge. Now you can take your precision and chuck it out the window because we're gonna eyeball this. It's a square, 
make them one and a half inches wide all the way down to that first line. And what we're gonna do is take our grinder and we're gonna cut from the edge down to that first line one and a half inch wide squares all the way around, cut tabs all the way around. Eyeball it, don't make it perfect. Once you get going, you realize you don't even need the permanent marker. You can just eyeball the cuts. So if you want to ruin the screen on the phone that you're using to shoot a video, throw sparks at it, like I did right here. I, I did want to point out that this area where we have this double layer, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut off the outside edge. This is actually a pretty satisfying portion of the project. We're gonna take all these tabs that we cut and we're gonna bend them in. I like to use the pliers to get them lined up just right, but realistically, they just have to be inward. And you'll see that they bend in pretty easily. You'll notice as you bend these in, you get a little bit of geometry on the upper edge of the barrel, which helps stiffen it up a bit for the next step. And next up, we're gonna drill a single hole below the center of each of the tabs we just bent in. And we're gonna do it along that lower line, that secondary line. We're just gonna, you can mark them out if you want, or you can eyeball them, but we're gonna drill a small hole below the center of each tab. This is a 1 8 inch drill bit. It's a pre-drill centered on each tab. After you get going, you realize this is pretty easy. You don't need to mark them all out. With all those holes pre-drilled, we're gonna move on to a unibit. This is a stepped drill bit, and it's a number four. Pick it up on Amazon. Great to have around. You can go inside or you can go out. Plenty of you are looking at the spacing of my holes and realizing that they are not that precise. We're building a burn barrel, not a clock. Be safe and do not drill into your hand. have a completed inner barrel. It has three formed legs, six holes with the tabs bent inward, the holes drilled around the top, formed upper edge, and of course it is a smaller diameter than when we started. So time for our second barrel. This will be the outer barrel. Uh, we're gonna flip it over so the rimmed open edge is upward. Next, we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna put two lines around the upper edge of this barrel as well. Uh, they're gonna be an inch and a half spaced each. So the first line will be at an inch and a half and the second line will be at three inches respectfully. And as you can see, I'm just gonna eyeball this and trace the lines around the barrel. Accuracy doesn't have to be perfect. Inch and a half each. And then next, we're gonna space out some lines. We're gonna drill some holes, a pattern of holes. I'm gonna space them out an inch and a half, and then we're gonna stagger the holes. So eyeball an inch and a half of spacing, and then we'll stagger the pattern. And in this instance, I am gonna recommend that we actually lay them all out with the marker. It'll help keep everything in line. 
And we're gonna take the same drill bit that we used before and we're gonna pre-drill all these holes. Stagger the pattern. And if you didn't catch it earlier, this is the open end of the barrel that this pattern is going on. It's unibit time. We're gonna drill all these out. This takes a while. staggered pattern drilled all the way around and we're gonna flip her over. Now knowing the diameter of the inner barrel we made, we're gonna lay out that diameter on the bottom of this barrel. Uh, we'll mark out the circle and ultimately we're going to drill a hole here, cut it out. Uh, measure your barrel so you get the right size hole here. go cut her all the way out I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this for later now taking that outer barrel with the hole we just cut into it and we're gonna slide it right over the top of our inner barrel it'll fit right over and since we measured it will seat just below the upper edge above the holes below the bent tabs now you'll notice it probably sits on that first fastener you put in to make the inner barrel smaller Since our inner barrel has a smaller diameter, the legs are inward of the outer barrel by about an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and put a fastener through the outer barrel, pulling the legs outward and fastening them together. They're all gonna be at a slight angle. One fastener per leg is all you need. And with the legs secured at this point, we have a completely assembled burn barrel. Remember the end that we cut out of the outer barrel, it's conveniently sized to make our own grate. But first it's got to be a slight bit smaller, so we're going to remove about three quarters of an inch from the outer edge. And then using a straight edge, we're going to crisscross and make essentially eight pizza slices. We'll put a dashed line between each of those pizza slices, so we have 16 total lines, eight solid and eight dashed. We'll draw one more ring about three quarters inch further in. That's going to be the inside of our grate ring. And we're gonna drill a hole at the intersection of each of the solid lines in our inside grate ring. So to say it differently, each of these holes, eight holes in total, are being drilled at the intersection of each of those eight lines and the inner ring of the two that I've marked out. Now the center of our grate needs a smaller circle for us to reference, so we're gonna draw one about four inches in diameter. This provides us with a unique geometry so we can draw eight tabs to form and bend upwards, almost like a propeller. So by drilling eight more holes along that inner circle on the intersection of those very same solid lines, we are creating the start and stop points to cut out this geometry. Each of the tabs we define here goes from a dash line to a solid line, from hole to hole. Dash line, to solid line, and from hole to hole. We'll cut that outer ring off so the whole thing fits inside our inner barrel. This is that outer three quarter inch ring. And now we're gonna use those holes to start from. We're gonna cut to the dash line between on the solid lines and then from the hole to the dash line again. We're gonna do this for each of the eight locations. Three cuts a piece. Solid to dashed, solid to solid, solid to dashed. Solid to dashed, along the solid, 
and solid to dashed. Once again, some tabs that are C-shaped and we're gonna take our pliers and bend them up. This gives it a third dimension, some geometry, which not only controls the airflow and helps our burn barrel burn more efficiently, but it provides that geometry which offers some rigidity and support to the grate in the bottom of the barrel. With this cut out and bent, we are going to go ahead and install this right into the barrel. You can just drop it in. It'll sit on those tabs. So there you have it. Finished burn barrel. Inner barrel, outer barrel, great in the bottom. Those three legs are gonna hold it up off the ground and the air is gonna get pulled in through that grate mixed with whatever fuel you're burning. It'll burn well. And then whatever smoke comes off of that fire is gonna to have to pass the upper rim of the barrel where more air pulled between the barrels will be introduced to the flame, causing secondary combustion. And unlike a traditional burn barrel, a secondary combustion eliminates almost all of the smoke. What's so cool about this project is that we hope we're not the last ones to try to improve upon the burn barrel. Every year, millions of people go ahead and burn yard waste, leaves, refuse in their backyards using traditional style burn barrels. Obviously, this isn't a novel idea. People have smokeless fire pits in the backyards all over the place. Applying it to a burn barrel is something we haven't seen before, which is what gave us our inspiration for this project. Now, the whole purpose of this channel is to inspire others and to receive inspiration from you and ideas and projects so we can all get better together. So why not challenge you to build a better burn barrel than what we have here? Someone can do it, and I hope we do, because it clearly burns faster, it clearly burns cleaner, and we all have something to gain by inspiring each other. So that's the gimbal, right? And it's holding the camera right there, okay? So Daddy's got both of his hands right here. And this way, I can show everybody what we're doing with the drum because the gimbal's holding the camera. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> I love you.